Hey Pro Guides family, what is up? My name is Nathan Ng, and in this video, I'll be running you guys through the list of upcoming changes for patch 12.14. If you want to know what champions, items, runes, or other systems are up for balance adjustments, look no further. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any future content like this, and let's get started. Before we cover any balance changes, let's go over the skins. I know a lot of players are excited for these ones. Recently, Riot released a bunch of Mustar Guardian skins, but the journey isn't over yet. Next patch, you can expect to see even more skins for this event. Star Guardian Akali, Quinn, Realm, Syndra, Antalya, as well as Star Nemesis Morgana will be available. These skins, as expected, look amazing if you haven't seen them yet. You should also check out Riot's new song, Everything Goes On, for some more context. With the skins covered, let's move on to the balance changes next. First off, we have a lot of system changes to cover. Since Worlds is getting closer and closer, Riot is continuing their efforts to mold the League's balance towards something presentable for the big stage. A big part of this patch is adjustments to healing and sustain, likely as a follow-up to a gigantic durability update a few patches ago. That being said, one good example of how they're going to be tackling this is through the item nerfs. The first is a direct nerf to healing via potions. Health potions, refillable potions, and corrupting potions will heal for less, but this is to compensate for the fact that we have more resistances than before. Health potions will heal for 30 less, while the ones that replenish will heal for 25 less than before. These nerfs affect all roles and should benefit aggressive champions a lot more than others. Aside from consumables, bigger purchases are also up for some changes. Enchanter items, Sunfire Aegis, and Kampung Chainsword are set to receive nerfs. Riot is serious about nerfing enchanters because Moonstone Renewer is about to take a huge hit. The healing and shielding bonus max stacks will be reduced by 1, lowering the max bonus from 25% to 20%. Thus, we'll likely see more aggressive supports find their footing moving forward. However, the enchanter item nerfs don't end there. Another item getting nerfed is Staff of Flowing Water. It's also having its healing and shielding power reduced, however, this one is a small nerf. You do need to consider that most champions building this item should also be building Moonstone Renewer, so grouping up these nerfs together, you'll definitely notice a bigger splash next patch. Redemption and Mikhail's are up for some identical nerfs, with their healing and shielding power being reduced by 4%. Finally, Arden Sensor and Forbidden Idol will have their healing and shielding power reduced by 2%. With all these nerfs considered, full build enchanters will definitely feel less impactful in the mid and late game teamfights. I expect the meta to shift heavily as a result of these big changes. Moving on to other item changes, Sunfire Aegis will have its base immolate damage decreased, but its bonus HP ratio increased. As a result, it will be stronger on champions who are committed to a tank build. Catapunk Chainsword will receive a simple nerf, increasing the cost by 200. As a result, champions that rely on it won't be as able to snowball as hard as before. We're just touching the surface of next patch's changes, but it's clear that the meta is due some big shifts. Make sure to contact the coach over at ProGuides.com if you want help preparing for the next patch, or wait until the next patch to do so if you want some high-level insight. With the items covered, let's run through the rune changes next. We have a bunch of runes getting adjusted, so let's jump into it. Beginning with the nerfs, a ton of defensive runes are getting hit next patch. The first is Biscuit Delivery. Like with potions, they'll be a lot less potent after the next patch rolls out. They'll not only heal for less, but also grant a slightly lower max mana increase. A rune often taken alongside Biscuit Delivery is Time Warp Tonic. This rune will have its movement speed bonus cut in half in the next patch. As a result, it'll feel a lot less punishing when you choose not to take it. To be fair, I didn't know it gave you uh, a movement speed bonus. <laughs> anyway, next is Bone Blading. Its cooldown will be increased by 10 seconds. It's not going to be a big deal later on in the game, but those 10 seconds mean a lot during the laning phase, especially if you're playing melee versus melee. Conditioning is also going to have its bonus stats reduced. Both the base and percentage increases will be lowered. The Guardian Keystone is next. In the case of this rune, the late game power and cooldown actually remain untouched. However, it will suffer from a 20 second cooldown increase early on into the game, signaling that Riot really wants to push for more aggressive meta elsewhere. Another upcoming nerf is for Second Wind, which will have its base healing reduced by 3. While that number doesn't seem like a lot, it's active quite often and definitely adds up when you're constantly getting poked. Finally, we have Unflinching, which will have its bonus tenacity and slow resistances lowered by 5%. With the nerfs out of the way, let's go over the rune buffs. To encourage more aggressive play, the first rune receiving a buff is Scorch. At the moment, Gathering Storm feels like the superior option. With the small 5 damage increase, we might actually see this change, especially since this is happening at the same time as all the other nerfs I mentioned earlier. Similarly, Sudden Impact is going to get buffed as well. It'll provide slightly more armor and magic penetration. That's it for the rune changes, so let's move on to some summoner spell adjustments next. Damage reduction has proven to be a little bit too strong, so you can expect to see nerfs for the summoner exhaust and challenging smite. While there were plans for some teleport nerfs, those were scrapped and will be revisited in the preseason, so top laners, you're off the hook for now. Another significant change to look forward to in this patch is for epic monsters. First off, elemental drakes will have their buff bonuses adjusted. Bear with the wordiness, but all five dragons will be provided stronger buffs than before. 
In addition, Cloud Dragon Soul will have its bonus movement speed increased slightly. While the reward is bigger than before, players still need to commit harder to secure the important objectives. While dragons aren't going to end up harder to kill, they will take longer to kill. Their base health and health scaling will go up before and after Summoner Rift transforms. I won't tell you every single number, but it's worth noting that the first dragon's starting base health will go up by 800. This should put the team that initiates trying to kill the dragon at a bigger disadvantage because it gives the enemy team more time to respond. Whether it's by choosing to push elsewhere on the map or to directly contest them and fight for it, there's going to be a bigger commitment to take those dragons down. Any jungler that enjoys soloing dragon is going to also risk falling behind as the enemy jungler will get more time to farm, gank, or apply pressure on the top side of the map. While it will take longer to kill dragons, they're also having their damage reduced. As a result, you'll probably be able to still kill them at the same points of the game, but it will definitely take longer. Overall, teams will need to allocate more resources to secure one, but the payout for slaying dragons has been increased. Elder Dragon will receive a similar set of changes. It'll have its AD reduced, but its health scaling will increase as well. There's also Rift Herald, which will have its gold reward increase substantially. Aside from the 100 gold the Slayer gets, it'll also provide 200 bonus local gold. In addition, if you manage to kill a second Rift Herald, it will spawn with 75% more health when you summon it. Before moving forward, let me also ask you a question of the day. Do you prefer taking Rift Herald or Dragon? I'm more a fan of taking Rift Herald, since it feels like it speeds the games up significantly. Dragons feel like it takes a while before you really notice it, but Herald is able to take down turrets and grants massive amounts of gold instantly. Let me know your answers in the comments section down below. That's it for the system, so let's talk about the upcoming champion changes next. Beginning with the top lane, Aatrox is set to receive some adjustments. In a lot of cases, this is, in my opinion, a nerf. However, he is objectively stronger versus very high burst damage. Aatrox's health per level will be increased, but this comes at the cost of some healing from his E and his ultimate in the later parts of the game. I don't think his win rate will change too much since the numbers aren't too large on either side. Wukong is going to be receiving adjustments as well. His passive healing will be reduced, but in compensation, his ultimate's bonus AD ratio will be increased. Nara is also another champion being adjusted. He'll have his base health and health regeneration reduced, making him a little bit less oppressive in lane. Next on the list is Gangplank. He's up for some potentially game-breaking changes. Red is going to go for some simple adjustments to encourage building crit on him. However, first his base stats are being changed, with nurses starting health and armor, but an increase to his health per level. Thus, the early game should be a little bit more difficult for him, and more aggressive opponents should have a better chance at shutting him down. However, let's talk about what they're buffing. First, his passive will now include a massive crit chance ratio, increasing the damage output based on his crit chance. His Q's base damage will be lowered early on, but increased at later stages. And finally, his E will also scale with crit chance, dealing slightly less damage early, dealing more damage later, and also have its crit damage modifier reduced. Overall, this pushes a lot more power into his passive, which is one of the easier parts of his kit to utilize. Since all you have to do is right-click the target, it'll especially help out lower elo players. Also, these changes give players more counterplay as Gangplank's early game will be easier to abuse. Because he's underperforming, Teemo is up for a variety of buffs. His mana growth will be increased, ultimate AP ratio will increase, ultimate mana cost reduced at later levels, and ultimate cast range increased early on. That's it for the top lane, so let's move on to the jungle next. First, Pantheon is receiving a big buff to his Q. It'll deal significantly more damage to monsters, giving him more flexibility and roll choice. Another buff is for Jarvan. His Q's bonus AD ratio will be increased, while his E's cooldown will decrease with ability rank. Similarly to Aatrox, Kane's Dark and Form Ross will receive some adjustments to healing. While the healing from his Dark and Form will be reduced, he'll gain more health per level. Next, let's talk about the mid lane. We have a single change to cover with LeBlanc. Our base mana, mana growth, and W base damage at later ranks are all going to be increased. Short and simple, this buff should help her especially in regards to pushing waves at later levels. Now let's talk about the bot lane. Varus is up for a minor buff. His attack damage will be increased by 3, which should help him immensely in the early game. Sivir has been recently given a mid-scope update that has changed the game for her altogether. Instead of nerfing her into the ground immediately, Riot is going to be taken to slow by simply reducing her W's minion damage. As Seraphine has been performing absurdly well as a bot laner, she's up for some nerfs on her W. The healing and shielding AP ratios are going to be both decreased. Zeri is also receiving some changes. Her attacks will no longer have a multiplier against enemies below 35%. However, they will execute minions exactly below 120% of her base AD. First, we have a buff for Alistar. His Q will have its cooldown and mana cost reduced. This is a solid buff given that this is arguably his most important ability. Alongside the enchanter nerfs, he should have a little more kill pressure in the early game. Yumi is up for a nerf next patch. It's a simple one. Her E's AP ratio will be reduced. Also note that the enchanter items will be nerfed at the same time, so we'll definitely see her perform a lot worse next patch. 
We do have a nerf to talk about with Renata. Her base HP and base AD are going to be getting reduced. Thus, she'll be easier to fight in the early game and also won't be as oppressive to lane against. You can also expect some adjustments for Janna. Her E's bonus shield and healing power will be reduced, but in compensation, it'll have a higher base shield and she'll also heal more with her ultimate. In most cases, this will be a nerf. But if you're in a rush and you don't have time to land any crowd control before using your utility, Janna players will actually benefit from this adjustment. With those changes finished, we've wrapped up our upcoming changes for patch 12.14. Like always, feel free to let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below, and also read the description if you'd like to join our Discord community. I hope to see you all in our next video, and as always, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.